Um, started off like a normal, wonderful day. And then, uh, lo and behold, next thing you see is uh, chaos and, uh, and, and, and people shouting for dear life. And uh, the pandemonium that was around, uh, the running up and down, the asking of questions, questions that I believe up to today have never been answered. And uh, the loss that we as a country, families, siblings, suffered on that fateful night. This very day, in uh, 2010, I was around. Um, I was from a production production uh, at National Theatre. The production ended at uh, a few minutes into the first half. So the plan was I and a couple of my friends had to run to Chad Dondo immediately after the, 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 the play that I was part of, that I was acting. I remember we were acting a play called uh, Muduma Kwe Kwafe, written by Wycliffe Chiinji at the National Theatre. And it was an all-star studied cast. So our plans were after the play, we come and uh, catch the, the finals here in Chadondo. And it also so happens that uh, at that time I was also working for XFM. I was uh, a presenter at uh, XFM, which had organized the, 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 the final fete for the World Cup. So by default, I was supposed to be here. And I made it, not, at, not, not from the start, but I caught up with everybody else. And when I came in, I remember, I entered from around that place where the gate is, and I strolled, this is me recollecting my movement. I, I strolled, and my boss was standing right behind there, said hi to him, just to show that I was present. And I was around for the activation. Then I went around the field saying hi to fans, friends, um, and then I finally walked to the center where the real first blast was actually. I was uh, seated next to, I think, two chairs away from uh, Khan. If you remember Khan, that was uh, one of the guys that actually died, the bouncer from uh, Club Club Silk, I think, yes, Club Silk. So when I came around to say hi, I said hi to Bebe Cool, I said the hi to a couple of uh, stars who were there, his wife, and a couple of other people. And then um, I had to squeeze myself through the crowd to actually go. And I told Khan, how come I don't have a chair? He's like, no, what are you wearing, Tebe? So I sat. And we were watching a couple of things that were going on, the fun, and everything. Then uh, that moment arrived. And I believe it was, uh, I think it was just God's grace for me, personally. Because I got a phone call on any other day. I would just actually have ignored the phone call. But I got a phone call and I anticipated that this person had actually come and was outside and was probably asking where I was. So when I got the phone call, I couldn't answer it from where we were seated because there was a lot of noise. We were right in front of the stage and the speakers were blaring out so loud. So it was, I was like, it's not my habit to pick phone calls amid these people. So my habit is I always go away, and that's what exactly I did. But the only difference is that this time, when I got this phone call, I don't know why, I don't run usually, but I sped off. And from that point, I sped off towards the fence the other side, I think around where those tires are lying right now. That's why I, wa that's why I went. I picked up the phone call, 
and I remember I just said the word hello. And it's in that instant that there was a blast. But according to my brain at that time, I thought I had been shot at by one of the Askaris. Why? Because he thought, in my brain I was thinking, he thought I had jumped over the fence. So when I was hit by shrapnel in the back, <clears throat> about three pieces hit me. My brain told me that was, it was actually a bullet. So I fell down. I, I, I fell down immediately. And I was like, this guy has killed me. So I was lying there waiting to actually die. But I wasn't dying. So I pinched myself on my legs and I could still feel the pinch. I was like, okay, I'm still okay. I felt the ground a little to try and pick up my phone. I found it. So I turned over. I flipped over. Now I was, I was before I was lying, lying on my back, when I flipped over to my stomach, I looked this side and there was chaos right where I was. My brain was, my brain, my, ins, my instinct was telling me, run back and pick your laptop because I had a laptop at that time. I came in with a laptop. Go back and pick your laptop. But I was still worried about the Askari who had shot me. And what I noticed from that side is that the people that were in front here were actually running to the back. And the guys at the back were running to the front. The few little words I remember that I picked at that time were Amasanyala Zegasabantu. Like it is the Ugandan way, they always want to see. Guys, I think from the back were now running back, were, were running to the front to come and see those who had been killed by the electricity. And lo and behold, that's when the second blast actually went off. For a lot of people probably, they would think that uh, a bomb is too loud. Maybe my ears were blocked or something, but I always insist that the blast that I had was this. Exactly. That. And it's at that point of the second blast that I now had somebody at the top of the crowd's noise shouting, stay down it's a bomb stay down it's a bomb from where i was i started crawling there was a, a mascot one of the beer companies uh, a guinness mascot that had been put up i started crawling towards that mascot to hide behind it the time i got there it had actually gotten deflated and I started wondering, what am I going to do? So I remember there's a trench at the back of this field. That's where I crawled to. So I crawled towards that side until it was announced that it was safe for us to come out. Stand up, go out, get out, get out, everybody, get out. This whole place was a mess. People running with blood. And uh, on the second blast, I vividly remember that it actually rained blood and uh, bits of flesh. <sighs> Recalling that day, is, that night is, is something that I always go back and I thank God for sparing my life. And uh, anyway, from... Uh, the trenches I came out hoping that I will uh, probably find my bag or something like that I walked to where the to where I was seated and that is when it, it it actually hit me that a lot of people had lost their lives friends I was with a few minutes ago some of them lay lifeless on the ground. 
some of them still perched in their chairs, but without an ounce of life in them. My chair, where I was seated, was ripped up, and the laptop that was there had gone. The only thing that I could see was a buckle. In that state of confusion, looking at the friends that I was seated with, all lifeless, I just decided, you know what, this is not a place for me anymore. I got to run out. So I walked, and I remember there was a, there's, 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 there's a lady that was uh, in red. She was pulling herself around uh, on the ground. And I remember she, the, the one thing that she, she was saying was, guys, help me. I cannot stand up. But the reason why she couldn't stand up is because her, her legs had been, had been hit. And I had gone past her, but I stopped in my tracks and I told her, you know what? There's only one thing I can do to help you. And I think it's going to be painful. Because there was a barricade that had been put just here, where the toilets are now. So I held her hands and I started swinging, my, swinging her around because she was really sizable and heavy. There is no way I was going to carry her over that barricade. So I held her hands and started swinging around, swinging her around. And I flipped her over the barricade. Jumped over the barricade as well. That's the last time I heard about her because when I flipped her over, there were guys that lifted her up and they went. I also got onto my way and went back home. That phone call. It was by God's grace that I got that phone call because there were a gazillion of people seated in this field. Another person would say it was an inconvenience. But I would say it was actually a blessing that I got that phone call that came in at a very, very, very critical time. Actually, let me say that came in seconds before the blast. There's only one way. There's no way you can possibly explain that. Why did that person choose to call me at that moment? Why was it my phone that was called? I know there could have been a couple of other people that were saved just the way I was saved. But because I'm a believer, the believer in me believes that it was God's intervention. Otherwise, I could still be seated there. I could have been charred or blown up to pieces like the bag I left in the chair. That's just that the way, <laughs> even up to now, I always tell people that uh, I am one of those people that now believe so strongly that each one of us has got a purpose in life. And it's just between you and your God to ask for that purpose. I tell people that me, I have always asked God, send me Njagenda. Because I believe there's no, there's no other reason. There's no other reason. Why was, why, unless, unless it's something that I have to go to do for my, for my Lord and Savior. I actually... For a couple, for, for, for a number of years, I, 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 I had decided to myself I was never going to come back to Chadron. Then I thought again, and I was like, but wait a minute. This is giving the guys who actually did this it's too much credit. 
while there were hundreds of brothers sisters, fathers, colleagues and friends that died, it would not be the best thing for me to hide away. I have to stay and show the guys who did this that you did not succeed. You didn't succeed, not even an inch. You could have taken innocent souls but the ones that you left behind have even bigger resolves to make the world a better place. So we shall always stand and remember the men and women whose blood soaked these grounds on that fateful night. If you were watching me and you were part of it, you are such losers. You are cowards. There is a couple of questions that I know. I, like personally, I always ask a question. For example, Lord, why me? Do you understand? But that's just me because I survived. But look at a child who lost a father. Look at a, a wife that lost a husband. Look at a husband that lost a wife. Look at a sister that lost a brother, a brother that lost a sister. They have very many answered questions. Why did this happen? Who did this? And how has it been resolved? Or is it a case study of, yeah, something, something has happened and we move on smoothly? To date, I have never seen a conclusive report from, 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 uh, from, from, from the guys who took up the investigation. And how are people supposed to go on? <laughs> you see, you understand? That's, those, are the, those are the little few questions. They might look like they're inconsequential, but they are very good questions that need answers. For closure, for the people that were gravely affected by the incidents that happened on that night. Am I safe? Are you safe? Or is it just the way that we live our life? You wake up one day, it looks like it's a good day, and you, you, you could die, and that's the end of it. How many years on? Ten years on, and no answers have ever been given. How did these people come in? Why did they do what they did? Who did it? All the w, A, w and H questions have never been answered. Is that too much to ask for? I don't want to appear like a bitter man. I want to appear like a man who is grateful for living to this date. A man that celebrates life as it's given to me. Each day as it comes. Stay safe and God bless.